This murder was Glenn's first big confession to the criminal profiler. Now Glenn was ready to come clean on another crime, the murder of Nicole Brown Simpson. Back in 1994, my brother Glenn told me he'd met Nicole Simpson, that she was rich, and that he was going to take her down. Just a few days later, a neighbor found the bodies of Ron Goldman and Nicole outside her Brentwood home. While I was thinking Glenn had done it, L.A. prosecutors charged O.J. with the crime. The trial began January 24, 1995 with O.J. Simpson charged with killing his ex-wife and her 25-year-old friend, Ron Goldman. Prosecutors used a range of graphic devices to prove their case. The animation showed the government's theory that O.J. Simpson came to, to Bundy, went through the front gate, killed Nicole, then struggled and killed Ron Goldman, and then left out the back gate. But the prosecution changed their claim on how the victims had been attacked when new evidence was laid out by the coroner. Dr. Lakshmanan said Nicole's head was slashed. She was banged against the wall and knocked unconscious. At that point, the prosecutor revealed a new theory. The murderer left Nicole and killed Ron Goldman, then came back for what is described as the coup de grace. When we first saw it, it presented O.J. Simpson as the murderer, sole murderer, in, in this alcove. It just didn't fit. By that time, we'd come up with the fact that there had to be more than one person. After eight months of evidence and three hours of deliberation, the trial of the century ended October 3rd, 1995. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187A, a felony upon Nicole Brown Simpson. Oh. Six weeks after O.J. was found not guilty, the law caught up with Glenn. It wasn't long before my brother was dropping hints about his past crimes. First time I heard about Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman's murder, I was in my office in Van Nuys and really thought nothing more about it. One day I did receive some letters from a prison inmate indicating that um, Glenn Rogers had written to him that he had met Nicole Brown Simpson and the inference was, and you know what else? We forwarded it immediately to the O.J. Simpson uh, prosecutors. Authorities ignored clues leading to my brother, and it would be years before Glenn came back to that story. Glenn wasn't going to drop hints and letters this time. My brother had learned a new trick during his years on death row, how to paint. These are pictures that uh, Glenn Rogers actually drew in his cell uh, at various times during our correspondence. Glenn was even able to paint the demons he believes have lived inside him all his life. Glenn had explained to me the meaning of this piece Basically, what you see here is two bottomless abysses, and this is the, the evil within him looking into the deep abyss and seeing two huge tunnels leading down into hell. At first, Glenn drew what took over his mind when crimes occurred. Then my brother started drawing hints about the blood he had shed. At this stage of our relationship, Glenn starts to include clues and or names and or places that he knows I will find in a certain amount of time. 
In June 2011, Glenn sent the criminal profiler a clue that linked him to the murders of Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman. Here you see R-O-N, and on this tombstone, you see the letters N-I-C-O-L-E. His admission of his involvement in the Ronald Goldman and Nicole Brown Simpson murders. After getting many letters and paintings, the criminal profiler wanted to confront my brother in person to get the evidence he needed. He paid a visit to Florida's Union Correctional Institution. Finally, years after the murder, Glenn was ready to tell his side of the story. The Department of Corrections puts out what they call cold case homicide cards. We would grab different games and talk for six hours a visit. After I asked him that he had not sent me any specific information regarding his involvement in the O.J. Simpson case, he said, I had, you just didn't pay attention to the clues. I challenged Glenn to prove that he had actually committed the murders, that only the killer would know what the actual murder weapon looked like. And so Glenn drew the specific weapon. Now, Glenn added a twist that he never told me. A husband's anger over a high-dollar gift that had been kept by his ex-wife was behind it all. Glenn told the criminal profiler he was paid to steal back Nicole's diamonds. Can you show me a set of earrings that would cost approximately $20,000 about 20 years ago? O.J. Simpson allegedly hired Glenn Rogers to get into the house of Nicole Brown Simpson and get a pair of earrings. Essentially, his belief was that they were worth $20,000. Glenn told me that OJ's instructions were that you may have to kill the bitch. Those were his exact words. Glenn Rogers explained to me that he had parked his white pickup truck, a Ford pickup truck, uh, on a side street right by the side of the condo. He explained that O.J. knew of a spare set of keys in the rear of the condo. The idea was that actually the murder would take place inside the home. Once Glenn got the keys, he then crouched down just past the front of the gate. At that moment is when Ronald Goldman walks through the front gate. Glenn Rogers realized that Ronald Goldman suddenly became an obstacle that needed to be dealt with. He struck him with a large knife, incapacitating him, and threw him against the tree. It was not something that I had expected Rogers to say. He said that upon her entering into the fray, he stabbed Nicole Brown Simpson once, and she fainted. He charged Goldman and pushing him against the tree where he later was found deceased. He said that he pulled her hair back to expose her neck and pulled the knife once to sever her neck to kill her instantly. OJ, anything you can tell us? OJ didn't want to, quote, get his hands dirty per se, in the crimes. He was essentially going to check on Glenn's work. If Glenn's story was true, there had to be something at the crime scene to show he'd been there. And sure enough, evidence came out in the Simpson trial that two men were there. Shoe prints spelled out a story in blood. And the Lorenzo. FBI agent William Bodziak went halfway around the world to find these expensive Italian shoes he said are similar to the ones that could have been worn by O.J. Simpson to commit the murders. Bodziak examined the bloody footprints found on the walkway outside Nicole Brown Simpson's condo. They matched the soles on the exclusive Bruno Malley shoes, he said, and the size of Simpson's tennis shoes are a perfect fit. 
But the shoe prints that looked like OJ's weren't the only ones there. It's possible to identify here the design that resembles a shoe. Yes. Nationally known forensic scientist Henry Lee identified a second set of shoe prints, what could be a mystery murderer. By the time OJ had gotten there, two people had bled significantly onto the sidewalk. If OJ Simpson told me I did it, I would want to know how. You got to explain to me how you did this in less than six minutes and got rid of the weapon, the clothes, the bloody clothes. How did you do this? Impossible. I'm absolutely certain that my brother Glenn killed Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman. I know my brother did it because I've seen proof that he was there. of the Brown family attended a candlelight vigil marking the first anniversary of the death of Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ron Goldman on June 12, 1994. Family members wore angel pins in memory of Nicole who had collected angel jewelry before her death. I remember the pin. Mom said Glenn sent it to her. And when she went to trial, he wanted her to wear it. In 2010, I have got another letter from Glenn, and this is what it says. At my trial, Mom has on that black vest top, and pinned to it is a gold angel with a diamond in its hand. I sent that to Mom the day after the situation in Brentwood. It's something everyone missed. I believe that that angel pin is absolute proof that Glenn killed Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman. The same pendant taken off her body. The same pendant that my mom wore on her vest into the courtroom in Hillsborough County Jail. <laughs> 